So grace and peace to all who gather with us uh, this Sunday morning, a very special day in the life of the church as we celebrate uh, All Saints Day. And uh, we're going to have an opportunity for you to uh, bring your pictures forward, uh, also to either light a candle or if you have one of the electric candles, to go ahead and uh, turn it on and uh, continue to adorn uh, the altar that we have put together, the ofrenda. And let me offer also just a word of um, gratitude uh, to both uh, our uh, incoming pastor, uh, Reverend Tony Asta, and to Bruce Hansen, who uh, worked on putting all of our ofrenda this morning uh, together. We are deeply, deeply grateful uh, for their hard work. So, a lot of stuff going on outside in the world, much of it troubling. But... We've come here today into this sanctuary for that time of peace, for an opportunity for uh, the new heaven, of earth, uh, new heaven on earth to kind of come to life, uh, for heaven to embrace earth, uh, as it says in scripture, that uh, they might embrace and there might be a kiss. We come to this holy spot trusting that it's not just us, but uh, that if we were really to, uh, to record uh, all of our attendance today, uh, it would be the, all the great saints who have gone before us and those many who are with us yet. So, as we crank up the sound of For All the Saints, uh, let, me all, let me invite all of you to Come forward if you uh, so desire and put pictures over here on the altar. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Bruce, maybe you and Tony, Pastor Tony, are going to sort of uh, be here on the stairs to help people. If you don't feel comfortable coming down the stairs you went up, know that you can also go out the side where there are banisters going down and come back into the sanctuary that way. So, for all the saints who from their labors rest, with them we rejoice. But we're doing this on. We're doing for all the saints.
together. We remember, O oh God, We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of the parents of others, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. Every time and place, the saints of God who have revealed Christ's presence, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy. Amen. You may be seated. We must go. And we must go. 
Our scripture passage today is from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. So then, with endurance, let us also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him. And he sat down at the right side of God's throne. Amen. <clears throat> And so uh, this morning, we're going to ask that our kids go ahead and stay with their parents. Um, and uh, if that becomes uncomfortable, there's always the nursery uh, across uh, the way as well that is staffed. Um, and uh, we'll, we may, in fact, find a way to kind of call you up here sometime during this children's word. Let me begin, though. I, I just want to say a word uh, about the special music this morning. You know. Um, I started seminary in 1974. 
Uh, this just goes to show how old Dory is. Uh, uh, but when I started seminary, it was really difficult times. There were just a very few women in seminary back then. <clears throat> and uh, Dory's song, The Ones Who've Gone Before Us, was kind of the, uh, the anthem of the women's caucus as we were sort of organizing in all those days and uh, held a lot of us together, together through, uh, through much, of, um, much of that struggle. And to be able to look at a church bulletin and normally where we see the words, you know, Bach or Beethoven or Mozart or John, Charles Wesley or, you know, Kevran or somebody else as being the author and composer of these uh, hymns that we write to see one of our own, Dory Blessoff, who has just blessed us with so many um, great songs that have uh, kept us going, encouraged our hearts and our minds uh, in, in the midst. I, will for, be forever grateful. She's one of my favorite theologians, quite frankly. And uh, <clears throat> I've read way, way too many of them. So today is All Saints Sunday. Um, and uh, we've decorated the uh, ofrenda here behind me. We've brought a, a lot of pictures, haven't we? Uh, pictures of loved ones. We've maybe shared a name and left a name up there today, even if we didn't have a picture. We've lit some candles to remind us of those persons who were the light of our lives, who uh, sometimes were there for us in those very dark corners and difficult times. And we've placed them here on the altar in a high place that signifies for us that, uh, that place of meeting. You know, kind of reminded of the words of Isaiah in the 25th chapter of verse 6 when, uh, you know, he says, in, you know, uh, on this high mountain, uh, God is making a, a feast for all peoples, a rich feast with aged wines and rich food. My kind of chef, that's what I say, yeah. It was a high place, a place of meeting for all the peoples, but also a place of meeting for those who have stepped already into that next reality, that next world. And so we've come today, and we've left pictures, and we've left tokens. Uh, you know, maybe it was a stub from a concert we went to with that person. Maybe it's an heirloom that's in the family. Or uh, this morning I put my matching cup uh, my Craig Thompson matching cup up there. He and I had matching cups so that every morning when he came into work and, and I was here, we'd have a cup of coffee together. Um, he'd rant on about the White Sox and I'd ignore him because I'm a Cubs fan and uh, talk about world issues and then also what we had to do in the building that day. These high places like the ofrenda, are in many ways a kind of healing station for our grief. They're also an opportunity to, uh, to say and to feel things that we didn't have a chance to say while those persons were still with us. They solicit our unpacked grief. And they also invoke in us a celebration for what we had, a memory, a joy, a smile on our face. Well, friends, this week uh, I've been cleaning out uh, drawers in the, uh, in the office, and uh, there went through my pile, my Euclid Avenue obituary pile of, of saints in this congregation. Uh, and for the blessed opportunity of be, being able to, to serve uh, them while they were alive and to care for their families uh, in their passing. And you know, there are so many of them here, and I was just going through and thought I would add to the panorama uh, others, um, like Sandy Marshall, who we lost last fall, and here's uh, Kat. Uh, Moses' sister that we also just lost uh, recently. Um, 
her own uh, beautiful Jean Stein. And then lately as well, Doris Kirk. And there are these prayer cards as well, and two members that uh, some of you would have known um, from the Lincoln Church that I served for a while, uh, George Bush, and who, no relation, you want to be very clear, no relation to the other George Bushes, and, uh, and also his wife, Shirley. It's Juanita Dunlap, who uh, Juanita was uh, the mom uh, of uh, Chris Dunlap. Here's a great one of, um, I, you know, I'm sorry, we, it, let me see if I can do this a little better with the mic. Uh, this is a, a great one of, uh, of Don Taylor, uh, who you will remember. And this is, uh, he is really a saint because he's got a Cubs hat on. <laughs> and many will remember from the Cornerstone congregation, uh, Mickey Mizuno, Kathy's mom, and uh, also our very own uh, Custodian here for many years, uh, Marion Bear uh, Jefferson. And uh, also uh, Jovita Cruz, who we also lost this past year. Um, and for Jerry Bennett, also one of our custodial staff who died back in 2014. For Bob and Marion Ulrich. And for someone who was uh, a guy who was just really quite quiet and uh, uh, would like to push all of our buttons of certainty, <laughs> a guy by the name of William Simpson. And for that great light of the choir, Bev Keel. Remember Bev? And for uh, Natalie Nemeth, who was a member here for a long time. For, of course, Craig, Craig Thompson. And for someone who gives more to the church in his death um, than those of us who are living, a guy by the name of Wes Weeding and Norma. For uh, Joanne Bristol and for her partner, Mary Morse, uh, who left us with an invested mission uh, piece. For a guy who grew up in this church and then served as your district superintendent uh, for many years. Um, I don't think his family was part of the first members of this church, but uh, early on for uh, Jim Reed and for all of the members of that family. And then Bethel, I, I have one here for your sister, for Miriam Bright. Uh, we also cared for. And uh, for a real jewel of a guy, Stephen, Stephen Gibbons, Stella's husband. Good looking dude. And for someone who was uh, actually a member of, a descendant of, one of the founding members of our church, this is uh, Midge Julian, uh, who was the mom of Felicia. Yeah. And we also remember her sister as well. Um, and then for, uh, remember, uh, <clears throat> Marilyn Zweig, kind of sitting in the midst of things as she often did. Uh, and for a real saint of the church, Iris Cook. Yes. Iris was uh, like that first woman of color who came by and uh, really kind of integrated this church. We have yes. for her courage and for her passion and love. We are we're much indebted. Uh, to her, and uh, to Larry Bloom, whose uh, partner, Bruce Scott, uh, helped us celebrate the courage and justice of the gay and lesbian community. And uh, <laughs> I always loved Larry because whenever I would visit him over at the Arms, if uh, Rob and I didn't come in with a copy of the Windy City Times, he kicked us out of his room. <laughs> And, and aren't there so many more that have been a part of, of our congregation? I, this cast, uh, you know, I think about Judy Viasana, who died way before her time, and Luis Carrasco in that terrible truck accident uh, that took his life, uh, Kathy Fletcher, 
Charlie Hassler, and so, so many more, who were people who embraced us because they had embraced the love of God. You know, none of these people that we've mentioned here or any of those people up there, quite frankly, were perfect. That's not what we mean when we talk about saints. They made mistakes. They disappointed people. I know I disappointed them. But you know what? They never quit on us. Never quit on us. Never quit on God. They believed when it was almost impossible to believe. Their love for God and others kept them alive when they were living. And our love for them keeps them alive, even though they are physically here no more. Some of them might have been members of our family. Some of them were just good friends, closer than many of the folks in our family. Some of those are folks that we knew, and some people we know because of the stories that people tell about them. Tender stories that bring them to life. Some of them were people that we knew and they had things in common, but they were also all very different. They lived different lives. We could go on and on about how different they were, and those would be great stories too. But they did have this one thing in common. And that is, they were runners. They were runners. They ran the long race, that race we call life. They ran it with Jesus, the perfecter of their faith, the one who went before them so that they were less loath to go. One could say that they ran cross country. They ran with passion for others. People like Sally Stovall ran with a passion for creation. We remember them, we name them, because we were somehow touched by their passion and their love. And uh, even when times were difficult, the fact they, they might have lost a job, skinned a knee, bruised an ego, but they were right back with us and are with us now. They fought back illnesses. They struggled for dignity. They still kept running. They still kept faith in the one who ran with them. They endured crosses in their life as they ran cross country. Crosses in their life no doubt slowed them down sometimes. But our crosses don't define us. They don't undo our love for one another. In fact, sometimes it just makes it stronger. They found strength in the church triumphant, which is to say, they found the idea of crossing over into this other world as something that gave them solace and courage for this world. They were glad for that church triumphant as we are, for those who cheer us on from beyond the veil, those who remind us all the time to keep looking up, keep looking up, because anybody who's a runner knows that if you can keep your head up, it's half the battle. It's how you fill your lungs and you breathe. They are those who shout direction and courage and strength along our path. Missing them, you know, that, that emptiness that we feel, never really goes away. Sharp pangs of grief are uh, changed, transformed into sweeter pains 
but it's still pain. Oh, that we might see them again. As my four and a half year old nephew Liam would say, hey, want to hang out? <laughs> well, how do we do that? I mean, where are they now? They are those who found that when you live with Christ and you die with Christ, you also rise with Christ. And so the question is, where is Christ? And the answer, of course, is obvious. They are with Christ, and Christ is with us. For some folks, they may find Christ and all those who are with Christ in quiet places, along a trail, out in Thatcher Wood. For other of us, we might find Christ in time of need. And how many times have there been stories told about you know, being in the hospital and somehow feeling the presence of a loved one? For some of us, they might be in the beauty of falling leaves. And still others of us might find Christ there in our joint mission to care for those who are poor, those who struggle for justice and liberation. Because those are all the places where Christ promised Christ would show up. And among them, important to us in our liturgy every Sunday is this place. This Eucharistic table, this table of thanksgiving. The reminder as we commune with one another that Christ is with us and we are not alone. That it is as real as taking the bread in our hand, for this is the body that is broken for you. It is as real as the taste of that grape juice that passes our lips. This is God's love poured out for you. At this table, we celebrate with all of the saints, those among us still, and those who have passed now on the other side of the veil. Every Sunday, as we gather passionately, as we break bread and lift the cup. Therefore, there is no better way, really, to celebrate All Saints Day than to end our service today with communion. To hear in our hearts the cheers of encouragement, the sound of feet pounding, knowing that we're not running this human race alone, but that we run with the saints. And ahead of us, the perfecter, Jesus the Christ. So let us give thanks. Amen. As you know, there are many mission opportunities, uh, not only for us in the world, but also even in our own village. <clears throat> Let me remind you of all those bins that we have out there in the hallway for refugees, tennis shoes, uh, for our mission trip, and uh, bags, plastic bags, cleaning up the environment. Uh, and also to remember our community refrigerator, which is across the street in the parking lot, which is, uh, I don't know, it's just like somehow or another you put food in there and it disappears, you know. It's, uh, it, the food comes and goes quickly. And so uh, it is of great value, I know, to the community that, uh, that is in need. Additionally, uh, as you know, we've had um, folks who previously were on the street over in front of the police station on Madison Avenue, uh, now with us in community, uh, being housed up at uh, the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and elsewhere. Um, there's been lots of conversation about how to help and um, a survey now that uh, Community of Congregations in the Village has put out 
Um, and so the trustees are going to meet tonight at 5 o'clock uh, on Zoom, talk a little bit about what capacity we have in our building. And then probably tomorrow night, sometime on Monday, we'll put a link out uh, to all of you to join in that conversation, should you want to join into it, uh, to see what it is, in fact, we can do and uh, how to be helpful as we move forward. Also remember that this is November. It's the first Sunday in November, so that means our mission for the month has changed. And uh, today we are celebrating um, and uh, also calling uh, for those love offerings uh, for United Methodist students. This is a fund that began in 1852 with kids in Sunday school. Um, and now it's something that you know encompasses the whole church. And uh, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars that are go out every day, uh, go out every year, excuse me. Um, I wish they went out every day, uh, pay off those student loans are earlier. Huh? Uh, but they go out every, every year to people who are in undergraduate programs, graduate programs, doctoral students, et cetera, uh, to try to equip students uh, for uh, being engaged in justice and life uh, in the larger community. Uh, go online to uh, Board of Higher Education and Ministry if you'd like to search that out for yourself or for one of your children as well. Now, um, we also have the famous clipboards to pass. I don't know what happened to the United Methodist Women's clipboards and, and uh, peanut brittle, uh, but we'll make sure that those get back out around. We still have a little time. But one thing we don't have time for, the choir, we're going to make sure you guys get this too, should you need to. Um, and that is the 19th is our anniversary um, as a congregation. Maybe last week when you were here, you signed it. Um, if you can't remember that you signed it, I mean, I can't remember where my keys have the time, so don't feel bad. Uh, if you can't remember, on the back uh, sheet it has everyone that has signed up so far. Um, thank you for that. Um, the only difficulty is, is we now need for you to uh, tell us whether or not you're vegetarian, all right? Uh, or any other kinds of meat. So, did you guys keep up? And then if you just kind of pass it back in good fashion. Uh, we need to have this, uh, you guys are uh, We need to have this actually by next Monday, not tomorrow, but next Monday. Make sure that we have adequate food uh, for everyone. It's a day for us to celebrate 125 years of uh, service to God and to this community. Um, and that is no small thing. Um, as I said before, we don't look 125. We may feel it, uh, but we don't look 125. Uh, but uh, this is a time for us to celebrate all of our ministries uh, here in the uh, congregation, uh, both ours and those who've gone before us and those who will come after. So you'll pass that. Uh, we'd be overjoyed. Uh, to get your, um, and you'll, you probably found something in the mail this week as well, so that's what it's all about. And then next Sunday, next Sunday is a very special Sunday for us as well. Next Sunday we're celebrating an anniversary. This is the 35th anniversary of becoming a reconciling congregation. So the denomination is still trying to figure these things out, but 35 years ago, y'all figured it out. You figured out that love means love. <laughs> That all means all. And, uh, and so we open this congregation to receive all persons, uh, regardless of their uh, orientation. Um, so um, next Sunday we'll celebrate. We have a great speaker here uh, who's coming next week. He's a professor from uh, Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary at Northwestern University, um, of which some of us are alum, right? And uh, he, will be, uh, he will be with us uh, next week. And... Um, uh, Professor Nolesco uh, will be talking about uh, the queer Christ. Um, that may shock your uh, socks just a little bit. I hope it does. I hope the church is a place where you come and uh, you get shook up a little bit. Uh, you have to think. Um, but I'm sure you will also enjoy it and uh, realize what good news it is uh, for uh, the LGBTQA community. Next Sunday, and we'll have a little reception after that as well. All right, friends, having said that, I know that the announcements were almost as long <clears throat> as, um, as the sermon, but you know, it should be that way. Uh, there should be all kinds of opportunities for us to engage and do the word of God, not just talk about it, okay?
Good. So then that said, let us, friends, take up our offering. Here we not only sing, pray, and preach for the new heaven and earth, but we put our tithes and our pledges where our hearts are, and we recommit to a just economy for all. And all means? All. You got it. Ushers, please. Friends, let us always be mindful of members in our congregation uh, who really need our encouragement, our encouragement to, uh, to get well, uh, our encouragement to continue on the struggles that, uh, that they're facing, um, and that the world itself uh, needs us to lean into it and to affirm the power of love and peace in this world. So then this day, let us be mindful of those who are sick, 
Uh, I know every week uh, we get uh, those pieces, uh, you know, the announcements that uh, list those names for us. Sometimes there's a particular prayer blast that goes out as well. Um, but let us remember those who uh, are in need of prayer. Uh, I am happy to say that we don't have anyone in the hospital right now. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I can quote for that one. Uh, but we also want to remember those who are we had newly uh, on there. Uh, Judy Siaba is recovering at home this morning. So keep Judy in your prayers uh, and also our young friend Andrew. Um, we also want to keep in our prayers uh, those who grieve. And uh, we've had a stretch of, uh, of deaths and grief in this congregation over the last few months. And uh, we just want to keep uh, in our prayers the family of James Stringer, uh, particularly Trudy, who we know, Reverend Trudy Sting Stringer. Um, they had Jim's homegoing service this past week at Edge Hill United Methodist Church in Nas Nashville, Tennessee. And so um, we look forward when the family returns and uh, we have an opportunity to kind of love on them once again. Let's also keep in mind all of those who serve. Um, I have nephews and nieces. Um, I know what it must be like for some of you to think about your own children and those children from this congregation who are serving um, their country. So we want to keep in mind uh, Jason and Larry, and uh, also to keep in mind Alejandro, and uh, Matthew, and Luke. We also are in prayer this day for our own communities around here. We pray for peace in our streets, and we pray for peace in the world. And we know that there cannot be peace without justice. It is the expression of God's love to hold those things together. And so let us not only pray for peace, but let us work for peace. So then, dear friends, let us gather all of these prayers this morning and uh, lean into the prayer that Jesus taught us praying. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our God. We give thanks to our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Jesus, for opening our eyes, for opening our hearts, our minds in your living presence. You have exposed us to another reality, a place where all the saints join you in the nudging and empowering our journey to a new heaven on earth. We name the saints we have lost this year and recognize them by name in your new heaven. Sandra Marshall, Jeannie Stein, Doris Kirk, Jim Stringer, as well as those dear friends and family members whom we have lit the candles here this morning. We join them and all the angels and all the saints of heaven in this hymn of unending praise.
So friends, as we gather at this table, we recall that frightening, redemptive moment that had to feel very confusing to the people gathered around the table when Jesus, with his beloved, gathered around him, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper had ended, he took the cup, again gave thanks, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, a new way to be in the world, a new acceptance. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, with the whole church, we enter into the mystery of your eternal presence and join together. And now, O oh God, bless your sacred, beloved, kind and loving people gathered here on this day. And bless also these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Some come to the table seeking acceptance, and they will find it. Some come seeking courage, and you shall find it. And some come seeking peace. May we all find it. Amen. So friends, we invite everyone to the table, just as God intends, and we ask you to come down the center aisle and you will take a piece of bread and then a little cup filled with the fruit of the vine and then dispose of your cups at the end. And uh, let me ask, uh, Kennedy, do you want to come forward and help us with communion today? Thank you, dear. Lovely.
There is a special moment when our service ends and Marty's gonna give you instructions in just a moment, so uh, stay tuned. We are going to have the scattering hymn, which is in the red hymnal number 708, Rejoice in God's Saints. Let us stand. So our scattering words, God, we give thanks this day for the cloud of faithful witnesses who have joined us. 
joined us in familiar songs and prayer, wondered and pondered our hope in the next generation, and shared your meal at this Eucharistic table. Those who have loved where we have hated, those who have healed where we have hurt, those who have spoken when we remain silent. Grant, Holy One, that we might feel and know the cloud of saints. May we learn to give that others may receive. Learn to die to self so that others might live. And may we experience your kingdom now. Amen. I'm not going to bless you just yet. Uh, but I am going to invite you to continue with us in the last prayer that's on the back of your bulletin there, uh, the prayer in the garden. Take your bulletin with you. Take your coat with you if you'd like. We're going to step out over into the garden to have a prayer. We want to consecrate the new bench uh, that is there in memory of Craig and also new stones in memory uh, of um, Charlie Hassler, Kathleen Fletcher, and Jean Stein. And when you go, we invite you to take a flower with you from one of these vases. And you can lay it maybe on a special brick that is there, uh, or maybe just there in the columbarium itself, maybe ones on the bench, uh, just as signs of our love for those who have gone before us. So let me invite you to come, and we will benedict one another over in the garden. <laughs>